Hey, welcome to Command Post. We are live from the Indianapolis Convention Center in Indianapolis, Indiana at FDIC. I'm uh, Chief Rick Lasky, along with my best buddy, Chief John Salka. And again, thanks for joining uh, uh, our annual live episode from uh, of the Command Post from FDIC at the Convention Center here. Um, it's great to be back here. You know, we were here in August, right. and in August, we, you, and I, you and I said this, then we went to the opening ceremonies about, good God, there was like, the place was packed. We had like 20, 25,000 people here in August. It was, it was a good pandemic. audience. It wasn't what, what used to be here in regular days, yeah. but for August on an off year after COVID, it was a great year. And this year, it's, oh my God, I think it's 100% right now. Yeah. How about, you bet, we, 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 first day, opening ceremonies, we turn around. Now, after 9-11, the place was packed. But I never saw them along the walls and them locking the doors so you can't get in. It was unbelievable. It was so great to see. And, you know, here, one thing I told Bobby last night, um, you know, that they brought, they merged the gems, you know, EMS Today, they merged that conference. Because, you know, the fire service obviously is very heavily into EMS, as it, they have been for a long time. But I know as a chief, a lot of people have had to, they always had to choose. Well, we only have so much in a budget. So, Rick, um, you got to pick you know, the EMS conference or FDIC you can't go to both. And I'm like, but there's great stuff at both of them. So now they're together. Oh, they, what, how about that? What a concept. Let's put and them you together. See it on the exhibit floor. There was a whole gigantic area of ambulances and medical equipment and stuff like that. Oh, it's, it's, what's been your favorite part back, back in April and Indy so far? Besides the fact, my favorite part was seeing you get and receive the yeah, yeah, 2000. Yeah. I know, be quiet. I'm going to say it. Um, my best buddy received the 2022 Chief Tom Brennan Lifetime Achievement Award. Very nice. And uh, he Very finally nice. caved and let us say things and yes. congratulate yes, him because yes, he kept yes, telling yes. me, leave me alone, because that's just the guy he is, humble and just a firefighter. But I'm very proud. But and my favorite part here was having my family here for that, but having Colleen here and Dawn and then Maureen came and Brian and and my granddaughter Layla, so it was fun. And the rest of your family wanted to be here, but Johnny, just, they just had a Johnny baby. Johnny and Sarah just had a baby boy, Phineas, um, and uh, James deployed. is uh, deployed in, in the uh, in the Philippines. Yes, our, our, so our he texted Marines. me, and Johnny texted me, so it's been very nice. And Rachel's home with the, the pooches. And Rachel's home, yep. She just got home from Europe. So everybody's at least, except him, oh, back in the U.S. No, uh, no Adriana. Or Adriana's yeah. home, yes, Ra Rachel. Rachel's up in up in Take care of the Wichita pooches, yes. with uh, with the dogs and uh, and Brian's heading home right now. How do you keep track of all your daughter in laws and piece of cake and stuff? You know, like that, like they've always been here. You know? <laughs> I know you love them, but but okay. So besides family, I mean, I know you do a lot of walk and you've seen some different people doing classes and that. I mean, the the highlight for me, John, has been just being. First of all, you and I, we love getting Andy. We just love it's like. You you said it. You you said beginning. I need this. You said, I so I need to be here. I need this. Yep. And and yep. to be around the people, to be around the guys and gals that are just soaking up everything, and yep. it's just so cool to walk the halls and, and just seeing all the familiar faces. Everybody's back now, you know. So yeah, it's great. And the place is just so, we're just so familiar, you know. I don't know about even the, sitting here and doing this, you know, every year. Is, well, I don't know about the scooters, but you know, other than that, I mean, no, I'm not riding a scooter. I don't know who. Whose idea that was? One well, poor guy ended up in a hospital. But uh, last night they were like in between cars and crossing. driving and all that. I'm oh, like, oh man, oh man. But but no, it, it was fun. We just uh, did the pass it on three book signing. You and I have been signing books. You've got a new book. Let's 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 do a shameless plug here because I love the book cover. But your new book is coming out. They just put the poster up down at the bookstore. Poster looks beautiful. I think they had. She showed me they had one for me at the book booth as well, which I left there. I said I'll I'll take it when I'm getting ready to go home. Um, the fire scene, which is really a compilation of all the uh, all the articles I've written over the past fifteen years, into chapter format by by topic. So all, in all different topics, all different the fourteen chapters. Yep. Well, and I, I know because I know we're going to be doing one on old school because I think the same thing happens with you. Yes, they could go pull it up, but a lot of people go, Chief Salka. Do you remember the time you wrote about or you guys talked about? Now they can go flip, 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 flip. Here, this article here. Then we can sign it. Or they can circle stuff on it. It's harder to do with a computer. You got to open it. You got to open the, you know, the application and look at it. And how do you scan? Well, you'd have to pull up every one of your articles because sometimes we talk about certain things in certain areas, but at the same time, sometimes in different places where it's not even the top. All of a sudden, we're talking VES, but something else popped up. Right. And, and I, I've been back to some of our our our, our uh, old school podcasts going. 
I I can't find that. I can't. Or our command post podcast. I went back on. Oh, I think the command post being in book form is going to be. Uh, I yeah. think it's going to be a big seller. I think it's going to be popular. Even the guys that save it, even the guys that that download all the all the episodes, you know, like I said, you can lay on the beach and look at it, or in the bed, or no. You know. When's your book going to be out officially? You think? I think September, October. Okay. And there and the bookstore is loaded with great stuff. You know, and I'll say this: you, you, we were just with him, Craig Haig. Chief, a retired chief of Hanover Park, uh, Illinois, and down North Carolina, just wrote the dynamic fire chief. I wrote the forward. And the excerpts he had at class down there in Amboy, and the, uh, it's a great book. And, he, you know, I There's mean, a Craig, nice Craig's a great guy to begin with, but right. that that is a great book for a <laughs> chief officer. Mild man guy. Yep. Yes. Yep. Good, good boss. And, you know, he's out there. He's retired. He's out there doing live burns, house burns, training, doing everything. He's just... And he's a he's a he's a proponent for mental health awareness and cancer awareness. And he's just a great guy. So, yes, yes. and then we're going to be um, speaking of cancer. I just saw Jerry Nailis. Jerry Nailis recovering from cancer. Oh, doing well. Had you know an incision. Had a big you know growth, and they got it. Luckily, okay. early uh, early detection. So he's he's in the instructor's room right now, doing well. Oh, good, yeah. good, good, good. Jerry's a good guy. He's he ran books for a while uh, yep. with, with fire engineering yep. books, yep. and then um, we're going to. So we're done here. We're going to do a book signing at the Dingus Fire Booth. And we love Dingus. The, the Dingus Fire Company, they're a huge, huge supporter of fire engineering, of all the, the fire engineering products, all the Clarion products, as well as the show. And they're a big vendor here. But they're, the two owners are volunteer fire chiefs. And they love the job. They take care of people. They do fundraisers. You know, anytime a firefighter right, is killed in any part of that Illinois or Iowa, they're the first ones they're doing gun raffle they, they i mean they do like three or four fundraisers for the family very nice you know they and, and that's donations from them too as well as other stuff so you know what they're the only ones i have on my website as a as a uh, link as a vendor because they, they get it so oh and and uh maybe 10 days ago i finished up being chief of south Lumber grove turned the keys in turned the white helmet in i'm all done got my black helmet on the rack and uh I'm back to riding the back. The other step. day you rode with Big Daddy. I love Big Daddy. Daddy. If Big Daddy's watching this, I love that. He texts me out of blue. Hey, brother, happy he took Easter. Happy Easter, brother. Yeah. I mean, he's a home run. But it was him and me alone on the rig going to an MVA uh, that we ended up not needed to work at. But uh, yeah, so it's nice just being back. I'd like to ride in the back of that and listen to you guys talk. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. He's a good. It's guy. just nice being done with it. You know, being chief. It's not, it's not a headache. It's just it's just work and time and effort. But and, you did it for a long you know, time. Yeah, absolutely. And you did the second assistant chief and the first assistant chief and the chief chief for, I mean, you had, what's it take nine years to get through all that, let nine alone years, yep. all the other years you've been there and stuff. And, yep. and I'm having a ball work, working for Ryan Fetzer, Wichita West. There, there Ryan's here. My captain, Chris Bashford, and Jim Spears was here. Jim was here. And oh, he, he, did he leave today? He left. Yeah. He's got, his daughter's got track meet. Um, great and, guy. Uh, great oh, guy. good. He's the, uh, Diane, Diane uh, said he's the official FDIC vet now. So He's got, he's got, be careful. A lot of people have dogs here. <laughs> but uh, he's hooked. So uh, it's nice knowing my, my volunteer department is represented well as they as pretty much every year now. And yeah, they got to meet Steve Chikorotis and Steve's a home run. And yep. Steve and Melfi from uh, uh, Sue and Melfi from, uh, uh, yeah, from New, York State, New Chiefs. York State Chiefs. Yep. They, 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 they were good. Talk about the class you and Butchie did. You know, we just did a Butch, class Butch, on Butch Cobb, Butch Cobb, Jer retired Jersey. He'll City. never say it. I'll say it. Legend in the fire service. Yep. Yep. I didn't realize he's 70. I think he said he was 74. God, really? He um, looks like he's, he's 43. He's great. He's great. He's still out there active doing some stuff. He put this program together for he and I. And uh, it, went well. it was basically engine truck search stuff uh, revolving around saving life rather than just putting fire out, which is a big enough challenge to start with. But it uh, came out very good. It, it filled. We almost ran short on time because we threw extra stuff in like we always do. But the program went great. He was happy. He went out the door right to, right to the Uber car and got in the car. And he was heading home right now. So uh, we're heading home tomorrow. So And I heard you had a rude interruption right in the middle. Rude interruption. Right, right in the middle. You know, there's nothing worse than you're, you you work, wait all year to teach at FDIC. You're in your classroom. You set up. You put all this work and ethic. In the middle of class, someone, uh, the firefighter from Wichita, Kansas. And I didn't he? see him. I was this way, sitting down, actually, because my back was hurting me. And Butch was up at the uh, podium. And he turned this one. He's looking past me. And I'm like. Who's that? I turn around. It's my son, Je Brian, <laughs> with my little baby granddaughter, Layla, in his arms. And he says, oh, we're leaving right now. I just wanted to, I didn't want to leave it off saying goodbye. I said, all right, thank you. Right in the middle of class. Hi. And there's like 150 people out there watching. <laughs> Hi, Layla. I gave her a little kiss. See you later. Goodbye, Grandpa. And yeah. all at once, they all went, oh. oh. 
you know, they left, so I missed him. If you're going to be interrupted, that's, that's perfect. A great way. That that's is a great way. That and Crystal is just set up. I've seen it all now. That's the first. <laughs> well, you, 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 Bobby, Chief Halton, the boss will. He, I, I don't know. I don't know how he pulls it off, but he like makes an appearance at every single class, whether it's for five minutes or ten, whatever. Um, I don't know how he does it. I'm glad he made your dinner last night because he is nonstop. You know, morning and night. The I was nice to see bunny. him show. Yep. Yeah, it was and he stayed cool. for a while. Yeah, they stayed, had dinner, and broke bread, and talked, and you know, and uh, it was not, it's just been nice having Dawn, like you said, Colleen and Maureen, and then Brian and Layla and family <clears> and <throat> everybody. Yep. And then those that couldn't see it got to watch it because everything was we'll to them. Yep. So, and our big room went well. That that one. Well, well. I've been getting comments all day from people saying, "Oh, it was good to hear somebody say that." You know, so. <laughs> they want they want to know if it was recorded because they want to play a certain section. It's not. It's not right. It's not. Recorded. Yeah, it is. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was is. a definite slip, but uh, it, it, uh, it was oh, almost not, indiscernible. Oh, not that one. That was no, not the one Father Carney came out and you know forgave you on. Uh, not the F word. It was one? uh oh, it was you answering a, a situation for somebody from the audience, and uh, oh, I don't recall. Everybody wants copies of it, but uh, oh, okay. But uh, so for those that are watching, um, so John and I and Chief Halt Bobby for years here have done a big room presentation during the day on Thursday was called the issues and challenges in the fire service, which is our hump day hangout the third Wednesday of every month. And we, you know, one thing John and I were talking is, you know, there's a couple of thousand people there, but that takes up all those extra classrooms that all these newer instructors or guys that are guys and gals that are dying to teach here could do. And we almost feel guilty. So we're like trying to figure out how to do it. And they've been doing what started as Bruno and Brennan unplugged. Then it was uh, Bruno, Bruno Norman. And then we lost it. There was John or, or Bobby. And then, and then, so Bobby a year ago says, we're going to change it up. We're going to do a program call after hours. And it's going to be the same time slot as uh, uh, Bruno and Brennan was, except it's going to be, you know, John Norman, John Salka, you know, uh, Bobby, Bill Gustin from Miami Dade and me with no script, <laughs> like we do our shows, no script. And uh, that was fun. That was fun. It went, yeah, it went well. It did. But, and now they're doing the book signing for Pass It On 3. The third, uh, third copy, third edition, which with some regulars and some new people. Yep. So <laughs> let me ask you this. Um, and the other night, uh, a lot of different topics after hours came up. But one in particular uh, that came up was about, you know, just like you said, fighting fire versus search. There was a bit, you know, we had a little discussion of where the priority should be. And I think we, I think some people got a little off track in the audience where they were, they were thinking, like we've talked about in our class, forget attacking the fire, hit it from the outside, or go in and search without attacking the fire. And I right. think a lot of them forgot about the whole message of let's put the fire out. And you oh. had some things to talk about. Not in a bad way, just like a little reminder of where the importance. And we talked about that again today in Butch's class. No, we're not saying no, we're not saying not to put the fire out. Of course, the first engine pulls up, you gotta put the fire out. We've had that discussion many times. However, you could send a third guy in with the engine crew and he could he could search off the line. So search can still be happening. And the minute you knock it down, you really knock it down, then you could turn into a search team. You know, once the fire is actually knocked. And 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 the point is you got to get to the search faster, not not leaving the engine attack out. You still got to do the engine attack. Well, and I think you guys talked about it. We did a particular show about however you have to figure it out, you have to search. If you only if you have minimum crews, you have you know, you have two people on the line, but you have one more person than he or she because part of that crew is searches off the line with them while they're operating. Not by yourself, down the hallway, in three bedrooms where nobody can see you downstairs. In working alongside in unison, you're they're stretching line, you're searching. Well, you all can that. send five people into a building, two on a hose line, or three on a hose line, and two searching separately from them. Just fine. That's just oh, fine. absolutely. Five people with a pump operator outside and the chief, you should be able to put a one room fire out and search a whole house. But there's so many people that have that those three people available to them that don't know how to use the one to search right. the two on the line. I, I, I thought it was such, you know, cause a lot of people go, you see the light bulb flashes going off the audience. They go, Oh yeah, I, I guess we can. They think a search crew has to always be separate, which we know it does. It, it, it has to, they have to be separate a lot of times, but if you have one person where you can leave them outside and okay. forego searching or have the officer go, Hey, John, let me just reach out for a second. Okay. Keep going. Now you got <laughs> this guy or gal, with this crew, the two guys, and they're pushing a line and tapping, cap, going right. All right, going, boom, into a bedroom, moving line. Okay, you know, come out. That bedroom is clear. Get over, get the one on the left up here. You know, 
and and you're at least you're at least you're doing something search wise, you know, to get that done. And then the more people you add, the more you dozens get of ways to do it. You know, and then uh, I, I I had you uh, I quoted you. I love that people throw that out to that meme all the time. That picture of you from Andy Fredericks. You know, you're down. You know, you're one of these moments with all the people behind you like this, yeah, like three yeah. people. And it was about the quote is something like, uh, "If my kids are trapped in that oh, building, yeah, yeah, I want yeah, the yeah. crazy son of a bitch you got going Friendly. in after them. Yeah. If you're going to stand outside and you're not going to get my kids, then get the hell out of here." They all stood up and clapped and went nuts. Oh no, the one we were talking about before was the officer staying outside. Was that from the from the big room section? What I talking about? Well, that too. That 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 was the. Uh, Believe it or not, people still do that. There yeah. are. Pe- I listened to a department not too long ago where that's what they do with all, a bunch of stations where the engine, engine 16's out. Uh, we've got one story, single family dwelling, and they do the whole comp roof and all this nonsense. Um, uh, so engine 16 uh, will be command. And I'm like, so, and I'm thinking, how many people do you have? And some of these guys are running two man companies there too. And it was like 20 seconds, uh, not even 20 seconds later, battalion one's out. Battalion one will have command on. It's like, and this is the same group that, Missed two victims, never searched. Took him 20 minutes to get a search crew in there. It, it took a civilian neighbor telling, telling dispatch saying to command, neighbor says there should be two people in there. This is after the second 10 minute clearance by this. You're, you're 10 minutes in, you might, you're 20 minutes They're in. Still it, saying and it. they cause an engine. So you get the primary search. They start yelling for crews. We're at one car, they arrest, no car arrest, and two people died. And I'm like, that's, that's like actually criminal. Basic stuff. You know, the basis come back. How many times did that come up out there about, you know? Yeah searching and uh how many departments out there have thermal imagers and no longer teaching the guys how to search conventionally because they have a tick no. now you just dangle it off that coach or whatever oh and we did we did our last uh golly we did uh our last hump day hangout um with fire engineering we talked what was the topic smooth 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 oh, board smooth versus work. fog nozzles and are we still having that debate and oh my god i got hundreds literally hundreds of messages and comments about about that it, it, i still get them People well the that, answer really is no there is no debate there is no debate they both work they both have different capabilities and take the one can you, you want. like one over the other absolutely yeah yeah i mean does it make you a bad person or a rebel rouser or anything like that i showed you a picture yesterday fdm1 fog tip i showed you that right fdm1 company operating with a fog tip they're out there so they do what they want to do they do what works best for them what they get used to what they like i think that what's the key the key is knowing how to stretch knowing how to operate Knowing how many bullets come out of you, how much water, you know, with smooth bores, I love smooth bores, but you got to make sure you're looking at your kicking kinks. You got to make sure you're pumping the right way with the fog nozzle. Got to make sure that first it's of a all, a lot more to know with adjustable fog stream, yeah. obviously, but, but you still got to know for the, for the, uh, for the smooth bore. Yeah. But, but it just, you know, not attacking a hydrocarbon based frozen gasoline nowadays fire with a wide pattern. Fo- you know, let, let's, right. let's steam the whole room, including the people laying in their pajamas. Yep. You know, um, th- those days are like 1955 ish. You know what I'm saying? That's something my old man used to do, you know, wave a fog nozzle over his head, but going in with a Delta straight stream, even though it's still technically a broken stream, hell it works. Absolutely. But, but I will say this, John, and I don't want to say where, you know, obviously to embarrass anybody, but I've, I've actually seen three different departments lately at major fires, aerial ladders up, tower oh, ladders up know, you know, know. with fog. Fog nozzles, tips, fog tips. Salmar, our good friend Salmar Casey from the FDNY, legendary truck guy, right? Salmar Crazy. Um, Sal used to lose it. He would like, look at the money they wasted on it. Why would you put a fog nozzle on it? It's already a broken. So there's one place they got this big warehouse going, and there's one, two, three, and every one of them, it's like, and all the all the water's over here. And it's already a broken stream. And, yep, yep. and some of my, you know, you still have the remote control, all that different stuff. But I, I, you know, look, there's a ton of great apparatus out here, you know, at FDIC, but I've never understood that. Why, why a fog nozzle on a master stream? And they I make had, them because they make them. That's why. Well, I've had guys say, well, you know, I've had guys say this and I've seen it. You've seen the pictures to cover an exposure. You could take an area, you could take a, you know, really, I could, I could take the next door neighbor's kid and go, here it. Take this hose and just stand them. Open it for you. Just yeah. spray water on the roof every now and then. If it's if it doesn't steam, leave it alone. If it does, just run water down the roof. I don't have to, you know, take a nine hundred thousand dollar ladder truck. Everybody or... likes this stuff. They like their toys, and their money. Oh, so what else is going on? I'm trying to think. Really, uh, we already talked about the book. We already talked about. Uh... Hmm. 
we got we got all our classes. We're rolling through with CSU and Columbia Southern, another huge sponsor of FDIC, Columbia Southern University, which I'm proudly an alum and on their advisory board. I stopped and saw them. They're out in the hallway at their regular spot. Are they not good people? How about Mimi? Mimi's oh, my great. God. She really makes it makes life easy for us doing the uh, company officer academy. Yep. Was that not a good hire by Nikki? Yeah. And they hired her? Oh, good Lord. She is just. I thought she was already in there, but. No. Nikki no. hired her. Oh. Yeah, Nikki. She came after Tori. Um, and Tori was incredible. CSU. You know, what, you know what I like about CSU? And I guess I can say this. They're a, they're a Christian. They're a faith-based university. But. You wouldn't know it unless you meet the people. They don't promote it, but they live it. Yeah, they, they live it. You wouldn't know because everybody there is awesome. Everybody there, everybody there is about family. Everybody there is a good soul, good person. And our girl is leaving. Nick, oh, Nikki. Yeah, Nikki. Nikki's yeah. a Nikki new got job. A, she got a great job. And a job. She was the one that hired Mimi, who takes takes care of us, and yeah. hired Tori and all that. She's She'll the one missed. we taught how to drive in the snow. A little Alabama girl yeah, up in Chicago. That was funny. Remember that, funny. like this. It's no, so she told me she was back up there and she had her friend. I don't know if they are in Boston and it's snowing. And she's like, Cruising. her friend was like, What are you doing? She goes, Oh, I've done this before. I was in Chicago with, with Salka and Lasky and I was driving around the snow. Yep. <laughs> yep. She yep. was having anxiety and everything else with that. Thing. And then we were just with Chickarotis with Steve. Oh, God. Yeah. From Chicago, retired deputy district chief. He's the, uh, I think he's a creative technical editor, editor uh, technical editor, technical editor of uh, Chicago fire. Great guy. He's the guy that got me on after that one episode a couple of years ago. Famous, famous fun. movie star. Yeah. TV star. Movie star. But, uh, and he said, hey, maybe we'll get you back on soon. And we, he, he came out to dinner with us last night. He's a great guy. Golly. Great guy. That's always, always thinking positively about the fire service. And you say one thing negative about Steve. Can you, can you, no? can, you can't, there's nothing you cannot no. say. Always sheds everything in a positive light. You know? And uh, it's always about, someone else yep and that guy that guy that guy is a firefighter he oh, was yeah. a firefighter all, he was all a, the busy places lieutenant captain battalion chief deputy district of chicago on the squads when they i mean they still fight fires in chicago but oh my holy god that guy fought i mean he knows the stuff what a firearm commander what an officer because a lot of guys, there's a lot of posers out there, you know, that oh. they have a dirty helmet, dirty boots, but that's from right. the one up from the right place to. too, some of them even, but, and he's a sweetheart. And he told this story last night. I didn't tell my guys, he told Ryan and Chris about how, when they try to kill him, they try to shoot him in the firehouse. They, they, they were, the guys are out the day before testing hydrants. And he says a lot of the drug dealers hide their, they had drugs inside the fire hydrant and then they were flushing it and they flushed away. So they're mad. They came back to kill his driver. And his driver was on the phone. Steve got up. He heard people outside, and they, they opened a fire. He took one. He it grazed his head. He ended up when he dove. He he uh, busted his knee and his ankle. Had to have surgery. He goes, if I wasn't for that, this he goes, I would have my 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 chauffeur, my driver would have been killed. Uh, and they had a big shoot. He's calling. He's calling. He's calling a ten one. That's a ten one. Like officer needs assistance in Chicago. Shots fired. We got we're under fire. And at, at the firehouse in Chicago. Terrible. But he told that story. But then you know we told all the fun stuff about. You know, and I asked, I asked him this. Sounds good story. Well, no. you and I did a show on it, you know, about yes. those tough bosses. Or if you go back and work for someone, who, who I said, so I said, who's the best boss you ever worked for? And he going, I go, I know that's hard. He goes, God, there were so many. He mentioned Pat Kehoe, who was incredible. He mentioned, and then he, met, he mentioned, he goes, well, it was Garetti. I said, Ben Garetti? He looked at me, I go, oh, when I was riding with, with Eddie Enright in the 3rd Battalion, We'd go to quarter. We'd go to quarters. Eddie would put his long sleeve shirt on and a tie. Anytime with it, he would. He go back short sleeve, button shirt, all the, you know, collar pins, badges, perfectly presentable. Nope. Anytime Chief and Battalion Chief Eddie Enright went to district headquarters, he'd go back, change his shirt, long sleeve, and put a tie on, and just to go to. That was the routine, and and Ben Garetti was the district chief. There's six districts in Chicago. That's four trumpets, one trumpet under assistant deputy commissioner, I believe. Slick, uniform, perfect. What a great boss. He says, you know, I, I was with that guy on May Days. He goes, nobody better. That His calmness, yep. his way of running things. And and I, as soon as he said Ben Garetti, I said, oh, I got mm -hmm. pictures of him on my laptop I can show you. That's funny. Oh, just, you know. Oh, he was on a long time. He knows a lot of guys. And Ed, <laughs> we always talk um, what – we wish he would be the technical advisor because he does all the shows in Chicago, movies. He's anything to do with the fire department, even those other ones. Uh, 
Chicago PD and EMS. He's the from the fire side. He's there. Oh, okay. He he does those as well. But I wish he would be the technical advisor for all the other commercials because there's that one blood pressure commercial where the chief's walking around like oh yeah, and he's the helmet fire chief. The whole upside down. They the goal goalie front piece is upside down on the helmet and printed and, the printing is right side up but the shape is upside down and and and, and that's the wooden fire truck one the guys come in like they come back to quarters if you look it's like a wooden it's not even a real thing and or the beards how about this there's one commercial there's like cheap cheap beard, and, and everyone was wearing full beards and i'm like no i'm not against beards but you're not gonna wear an scba if you're wearing a beard you know you gotta be an exterior firefighter or whatever yeah. and i'm like who you know, so my wife posted, do any other spouses out there just go nuts? Every time there's a commercial about a firefighter that's not done right, say, who? And everybody else piped up. My husband does the same thing. My wife, they get mad all the time when they see something like that. So, but uh, anyway, yeah. So, you know, Steve, Steve's a good guy. Steve's yeah, a great guy. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, but, it, you know, and Tommy Merrill still doing the professional mountain doing fire good, department. Doing very good. Yeah. Reaching out to people. Um, yeah, I did the forward for his upcoming book. Which will be out probably after the new year, he said. Yeah, he, you know, sadly, and I, I love Tommy, but once in a while he gets some nitwit out there will throw a shot. Because, I, know. I don't know why. Because, he, and it's a shot because he does a column in a show called The Professional Volunteer Firefighter. So, so you know, I think I told you the story. I was up in Canada, we're up in Canada a lot with our Canadian brothers and sisters. I'm up there and I'm going to do an evening program, but I'm doing an afternoon leadership program for just the officers in this fire hall. And there's a big room, and they're all filled. There's an aisle down the middle. And uh, after the first hour, I noticed there's like two different groups there. I remember story? this story. Yep. And, and they're sitting there, and I finally said, well, are you guys two different districts? And this guy over here goes, no, we're the profession officers. They, they, they the volunteers. I went, oh, so what, what you tell me is you have your, your terminology mixed up. No, no, we're the profession of the volunteers. I said, no, no. I do a lot of labor contracts. I help you a lot. I've never seen one written where they refer to them as – now, they'll, they'll say the quarterly professional firefighters, local, whatever. I understand that. But the proper terminology is career. And then, you know, you have paid on call volunteer. I said, so so the point I make it to you is you're both professionals. One does it as a, as a career. One does it out of goodness heart. They want to help the community. I said, for that matter, prostitutes are considered professionals as well. I don't know what kind of T-shirts they wear, what kind of stickers they have on their car. But if you, and they all laugh. I go, seriously, you, that you're hung up on that word. I mean, that, you know. And, uh, but Tommy does such a great job. 63% of the department, you and I are both, we've been both career volunteer firefighters. We're passionate about both. You know, we love both. We still love both, but there's just under 40,000 fire departments in the United States. 63% are, and are pretty much always going to be volunteer. And, uh, there's places out there that can't even have a part-time guy, let alone a full-time fire department. So why would you not let your guys, guy gave me a hard time about Butch Flanagan, who I love, one of my captains. Because he was, he was volunteering. He would drive two hours home from Louisville. And this guy was like, you know, calling him a scab and things like that. And I'm like, first of all, you terminology mixed up. He said, secondly, there, he's got a little town. You mean he can't protect the people's homes he goes to church with and all this stuff? Really? I mean, are you, are you that hung up on that? You I know, know. it's just. And Tom's got such a great message. Some guys like that. And, and if anybody should get a little, <clears throat> get cut a little, whatever you want to call it, on being a volunteer it's him because he's always promoting equality and professionalism and do your job and, 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 you know, do it right and have the correct equipment and get funding and stuff like, look at all of his own department, what they're doing, all the different categories of membership that they're creating to attract new people. And some people just work hours instead of having to make a percentage of all the stuff they work in a certain amount of hours. You know? How about the thing he came up with? I think we talked about it once before in here. I think we did talk here about, Instead of just counting calls, you get points. Maybe maybe you can't make the calls at, in the evening because you have an evening job, right. but you're the one that makes all the fundraisers and the different. Yes. So let, let's you know let's take a, hours. That's what it was hours. So you come in on Saturday, you work four hours washing and waxing and, and cleaning you get stuff credit for four hours, and you get instead of so because you how many guys you know that are. They just, the calls, God, I just got to work and the pager went off. I just got to work. Or you it's just like, got home and your wife went to work and you're home with the kids. So like yeah. I said, a guy, could, a guy could just work hours counting the runs and counting standing by in the firehouse for a couple hours. Some guys just put down, they get maybe less points, but they get some points for being home. But putting themselves down as I am available and I will be responding. 
They might get a whole eight hour day. They know they're going to be home working on the lawn and they know if they get around, they'll come down, but they're not going to hang out down there. So there's points allowed for that too. So the point is Tom is being very creative with his fire department in a lot of ways to attract more volunteers in there without dealing well, with And money. to keep the guys he has, we talk about recruitment and retention. Right. And, and I thought, I never thought, you know how we learn something every day. You and I were always like, I just learned another thing. And I'm like, they're giving credit. I mean, instead of just count, everybody just counts calls, meeting nights, meeting, drill night, and calls. Right. Yet they give you credit for for projects, for right. doing, I mean, just what, what a great concept. You, you can't say, and well, all you got to do, do is not make any calls. You can expand it yourself. You can expand it into all different things. There's times I go on a road jump in Wichita West. It's like, the, it's like they know. They know I'm on the way to the airport. All of a sudden, bing, 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 bing. All the calls, I'm like, I've been home for like four days. I didn't have a call. I know. I'm at the airport. And Three you, while you're in the airport. I, I, I were they on delay or something like that? But what a great concept. So yep. so what else before we close things out here? We're, we're, uh, we're, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Everything's good. I mean, COVID's over and everything's back up to pretty much normal. Seminar schedules are moving right along. We're filling up, you know, you know not filling up the calendar, but putting them on the calendar pretty regularly. Got a couple more people interested here. <laughs> You know, here the show is great. Good, good attendance. So the, the hallways are full of people. Oh God, we barely no made masks. it up here. They just dropped the masks on the planes. It was great coming here, flying on a plane without a mask on, you know. So all those little things start to add up to a little bit more normalcy, which is great for everybody. We're going, uh, let me see, next month, we're going to Spartanburg with our friend Marion Blackwell. Yep. Um, you know, <laughs> and we're doing three days there in May. Well, you know who's going to be there? I'm trying to remember her name from um, Columbia Southern. Um the gal we see all the time at the booth with the long dark hair. Ashley? No. Um, oh gosh, I'll think of it. Oh, right. from Columbia Southern. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, uh, um, 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 Kim. Yes. Kim Plush. Kim Kim's Plush. Kim's gonna be there. Kim's the she one. She said she's gonna be at oh at Spartanburg. Kim and she had Kim has that Alabama. Yes, she accent. does. Kim Plush has been with CSU forever. She's the one that got me to finish my degree. She's the one that she's a sweet. She guilted me in a nice way, but she is. She is she like, said, I'm going to be there at Farnburg uh, with you guys. I said, all right. You know, my guy said, you know, I, I was hesitating and I, and 10 minutes visiting with Kim and, you know, she's just so good. She's just a good heart, good person. And it's a good organization. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's pretty well, good. I met like the new CEO or whoever he is. I forget his name, Tim or something, but uh, nice guy. And they're moments away from the big time accreditation. Uh, that's, that's going to happen. So good, good, good partners. I said, Oh, we love you guys. We love teaching with you and being, you know, part of you, so that was oh, good. Keith Paget. Like I said, CSU has been a huge, there's always ads in the magazines from them, and fire engineering, all the different gems, all of them. They give scholarships, they take care of our military, our armed forces, people, homeland Very security. Good. good organization. Great, great group, so. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, fall and fire. They're yeah. just, they're awesome, so. Yep. Well, other than that, well, again, congratulations. That's this is it. your thank year, you, I'm so happy. You. Golly, man, what else? You, so he's got, he's, he's, he's got the Stanley Cup ring, which was, uh, uh, or the World Series ring, which is the Firehouse, you know, Hall, Hall, of, Hall, of, Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, he got their life, to, and then he got the, so I'm trying to think of what. So that's the Super Bowl ring, the Training that's Achievement the, Award. Oh, there's the Stanley Cup. There's the Stanley Cup ring. So you got that Training Achievement Award and the Stanley one. Cup ring, and then you got the House, uh, the Fire, Fire Firehouse Award, you know, Hall of Fame, which is 19 the World Series, and you got the Super Bowl ring here the other day. And 22. I'm trying to think of what other rings we're doing. Trifecta will do. The trifecta is good. Do you, are you, do you race horses? You I'm done. Do the, I'm done. Said, I'm Louisville. done, 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 done. What's the Louisville big horse race they have down there? Know. You know, where everybody goes there with the hats and all that stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. What? The Kentucky yeah. Dirt. You're going to go to race in a Kentucky, no, Kentucky Derby next? No, thanks. Like no, thanks. I'm just trying to think of what other work. I'm good. I'm good with awards. <laughs> all filled out. Well, congratulations. Been great. Man. Been great. Hope everybody loved listening listen to us today well if you want if they want to get a hold of you email chief john salka at gmail.com and i'm chief lasky at gmail.com and my website at uh, chief lasky.com and again we're just going to plug them uh, firecompanies.com dan what a great guy beautiful just i mean in a heartbeat danny just changed boom done he's just yep. and, he, and he's all about the fire service and yep a lot of else. fire service guys go through him work yeah. for him yep. so excellent well, with that, we always end all of our shows with a very important phrase, and that's please keep the, especially now, mm -hmm. please keep the men and women in our armed forces in your thoughts and prayers, as well as our brothers and sisters in blue and law, blue and law enforcement. And remember, never forgetting means just that, never forgetting. Thank you. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye.